I'm a huge Blur and Oasis fan. Um, and my, my first single actually going down really personally for me was inspired by song two, um, a Blur song. That was kind of my version of it. Um, yeah, and you know, my, my music taste has always been really eclectic. One of my favorite Blur songs, and because there's great memories attached to it, is Girls and Boys. And I was at um, a Blair gig at the Astoria in London, which isn't there sadly anymore, it's been knocked down. But uh, me and Jerry were there and someone dared us to go up to run on stage because we were like kind of up the side in like a little balcony bit and we could get to the side of stage quite easily. And I said, if the next song's Girls and Boys, we'll do it. And they started Girls and Boys. And when you said you got to do something, you got to do it. So, um, so me and Jerry were like, just, you know, total Spice Girl style, really ridiculous. And we ran down and we ran on stage and she made it. She, she got about halfway to Damon. I got about a quarter of the way. And then we were scooped up by security. But it was, it was really funny. And we got in lots of trouble the next day. And it was all in the papers. Oh, well, it's funny because I, I saw Damon afterwards. And there has a little party afterwards. And he said, if, I've, if I'd have known it was you guys, I would have told security to get lost. <laughs> <laughs>
and there was a couple of lineup changes and then the, the final piece of the jigsaw was Emma. Once Emma came along, something happened. It was just a spark, it was a dynamic, something we felt very special happened. And, you know, we were still, we were dressing the same, we were singing other people's songs, and then, you know, we wanted to write, and, and we had a lot to say, and we all really, we were all so ambitious and very single-minded about what we wanted to achieve, and, and we were so determined that we just had this energy, and we kind of just took people along with us, and everything we did was very much you know, our expression as, as a collective, you know? And we did experience sexism in the music industry because we never set out to talk about girl power. You know, we were told girl bands don't sell records, girl bands don't sell magazines. And we were like, what? We were like, right, we've got a job to do here. Like, we've got to prove, like a very male dominated industry, we've got to prove them wrong and we've got to do this for the girls. I remember having that conversation. We sat and said, we have to do this for the girls. And from that moment, girl power was born really for us. And it, you know, it's just one of those things. It just happens. The timing was really good and, and it affected a generation of girls and now 20 years later I get to meet those people some of them are artists some of them are journalists DJs I see people when I'm out shopping with my daughter and I can't tell you the amazing things that people say to me and how the Spice Girls influenced them positively and and kind of has affected them in their you know lives as grown-ups and I just feel so lucky that we had an opportunity to do that Um, well, gosh, I've lots of female vocalists. When I think um, back to when I first started listening to music, like it was my mum's music, so it was artists like Dusty Springfield and and, and Stevie Wonder, lots of Motown. Um, as I got a bit older, I loved the Arrhythmics, and Annie Lennox has remained, um, you know, a big inspiration to me. And um, and Madonna, she was kind of the one because I loved to dance as well, and when she did her huge shows and it was such a big production that was kind of a turning point for me because I watched I remember Blonde Ambition I think it was 1990 and I was just like that's it that's what I want to do you know Kate Bush was my first musical memory I was in a bakery <laughs> I think I must have been about three and it was Wuthering Heights was on the radio and I remember just hearing this song and thinking that's you know because it, it was so crazy like nothing I've ever heard before and um, and I, I do I've never you know really followed Kate Bush but I, I really appreciate what she's done the first time we met Take That it was I mean we used to watch videos of Take That because they were the biggest band around when we first got together the Spice Girls and so you know we were inspired by them because they were they were huge and they're so well loved in the UK and we met them, it was, we were at the Brit Awards in 1996, but nobody knew who we were because we hadn't released anything. We were signed and making the record, but we were, it was all pretty much under wraps. And that's when we first met the boys without Robbie, he'd already left. And it was, yeah, it was, we were just so bulky. I mean, we, we kind of just always walked around like we owned the place <laughs> from day one, which was really good fun. But it was good to meet them, but we were, we were always cool, you know, meeting people like that. Yeah, I did the first season. Um, we were shooting in Singapore, um, but it was across the whole continent and we had people come in and audition. And it was amazing. It was a really fantastic experience. But, um, I, you know, I love to do some TV and I do some radio and musical theatre, but my first love is my music. So I, I am very lucky that I have all these great opportunities, but I'll, I will always come back to what I love the most, which is what I'm going to be doing tonight. I don't think I'm very good at judging because you know, I, you know, you have to be entertaining, and so someone like Simon Carl, he's very entertaining because he can he can be very cruel. Um, you know, I am a performer, so I have empathy with the person on the stage. I know how it feels, and and I'm a nice person. I don't like being horrible to people. So it, trying to be, you know, having constructive criticism but being entertaining it is quite difficult. <laughs>